Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to a new, exciting episode of Take the Black Live, the one and only show on the internet. By myself, Dan Selke of Winter is Coming Net, and Daniel Roman of Winter is Coming Net. Net. Talk all things sci fi, Hello. fantasy, swords, dragons, robots, the future, the past, the present, and um, uh, it's a delve into the depths of pop culture and come out with beautiful pearls of wisdom. Daniel, how are you doing today? <laughs> right? That's pretty I'm good. I'm doing That's pretty well. well. Th that was that was pretty good. I after you got done, I was like, man, I really want pearls of wisdom. I'm excited for this show today. Uh okay. no, I'm good. Uh, you know, living in the last of us land, so vacillating between emotional devastation and general cheer. How are you, Dan? And how I'm are well. all of you out there? We'll talk about that a little later. I'm good. I, I just biked into yes. the office, so I have a little adrenaline rush going. Um, and uh, I feel kudos. like I'm ready to discuss the comings and goings of pop culture with you, Daniel Roman. And Yay. Daniel, and That's hello, fun. everybody, for, for coming on. Hey, Julie. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Martha. Thanks for joining us. We have a live one for you today. Daniel, what are we talking about yes. today up in here on this day? We're talking. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about a bunch of stuff. Uh, it felt like. What? You know, it's kind of a loaded week a little bit. We've got a little bit of Westeros updates for you guys. And then we've got a brand new trailer just dropped a few hours ago Ooh, for the true. Last Kingdom movie, Seven Kings Must Die. We're going to watch that. We're going to talk about that and our various hype levels. And then I'm sure we'll be talking about The Last uh -huh. of Us as well, because we can't not. It's kind of huge right now. And we're we've been both enjoying it a lot, I think. I'm surprised That's by how, how 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 many legs The Last Kingdom has. People just really quietly caught on to that show and wouldn't let go. If I were Netflix, I'd make yeah. a whole new season. But um, I'm not, so a movie will have to do. And Julie, thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, I don't know if they do, do I feel any wiser. I do not. But, you know, um, <laughs> that comes with time. Uh, we, we we saw a production of Les Miserables uh, here in Chicago. Daniel, have you seen Les Miserables? Uh, I've never the, seen it live. The, the I've seen it enough. Yeah, I, I'm, let's say, intimately familiar. I've seen uh, recordings <laughs> of it many a time. I hope you are dreaming uh, a dream today. But That's a good the one. the saddest song in the musical, Daniel. I don't know why you think <laughs> no. that. It's just the one that came to mind. Really but quick sidebar. You can sidebar. be the master of the house on the podcast. And that How's guy's that? an Better? ass. No, none of this is good. <laughs> All right, you can pick the song I that can best hear the people you from sing Lemus. the song of angry men. There's dreaming of a something, whatever. It's all epic. Um, anyway, Daniel, all right, Dan topics. Valjean, you heard it here first. Yes, it wasn't Valjean. That was the revolutionary. Never mind. This is hopeless. <laughs> um, anyway, what happened? <laughs> um, uh, in, in, in Westeros this week. Any Les Mis fans yes. out there, sound uh, off if you like and seen uh, and, 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 and have seen Les Mis. Okay, and Daniel, go on. Um, so the, the biggest House of the Dragon news comes from Mideast Comic Con. Um, Matt Smith basically oh. dropping what, what might feel like hard news for us to digest, which is just that the scripts for season two are, in his words, really late. He just mm -hmm. got them last Friday, is, is when he was talking about this. He said, I just got them this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, he hadn't even finished reading them before the Comic-Con. Um, it's a little hard to tell how serious he's being here. Did did, did you read his whole quote? Because he's kind of like, oh, that's, that's the way it is in this business. Ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha, ha. Yeah. So I... I don't know if they're actually late or not. No, he's being serious. No, here they are. Like, none that I that I read it. I okay. saw the clip of him um talking. So, like oh, a juror, nice. I got the inflection so I can judge him guilty or yeah. innocent. You um, do have a gap. Yeah. I believe I, you. I do. Maybe he's going to lie. <laughs> um, yeah, he he's being serious. The ship's come in late. He said that that always happens. It's not totally unusual. Um in the absence of episodes, there happened some rumors cropping up, like there were some ones about uh, there being chaos in the writer's room and George R. R. Martin need to come in and rewrite the scripts. Yes. I I I do think that that's the kind of like fungal rumor that crops up in the cracks of information between <laughs> seasons. Yeah, Last of Us, I man, agree with that. Forceps. 
That that was um, nice. I like that. Thank you. I'm 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 full of metaphors today. But yeah, they're in late. They're gonna start soon. And then at um a screening event, a lot of the cast and crew got together. We're talking, you know, uh Matt Smith, Damon Targaryen, also Ryan Condal, the showrunner, George R. R. Martin was there, Emily Carey, Risa Fons, who plays Otto Hightower, Steve Toussaint, who plays uh, Carlos Valerian, lots of cast members. Rennie's Targaryen is there. Eve Best, and for some reason, Josh Gad was like also there. I don't know why. Uh, not in that picture, but there's like there's one picture where it's just all of them and also Josh Gad for God knows why. Uh, I had um, to look. But they all went to I a screen. Who that was? Got it. It it's it was it's Josh Gad. It's 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 Olaf the Fro- <laughs> it's the from Frozen. He's just there for House of the Dragon. He's not joining the cast or anything. He's he's just kind of hanging out. Um, that's too anyway, bad. they got, I guess, <laughs> beautiful. Yes, by the way, we got two Lay Miz stands in the comments with Martha and over on the YouTube, nice. JD Palm 13. It is, it is one of the best musicals in all time. Yes, it is. I've seen a couple times now on stage. Um, anyway, they all got together and just answered some questions. They say filming again soon, obviously. They also say we're going to meet five more mm-hmm. dragons in season two. Yes. Which man, there are so many damn dragons in this story. It really, it. I mean, it's yes, called House of the Dragon. Are. It makes sense. By the by, the time this show is over, dragon animation technology will have advanced by decades. Like the techniques they yeah. develop on this show will just really push forward the ability to create dragons in live action action series that how to train your dragon yeah. live action movie is going to be a cinch because of trails they blazed making all this stuff yeah i mean i i don't disagree with that at all you know looking at the technology they invented for game of thrones for like danny riding around on the dragons that has we already are seeing how that's progressing for house of the dragon um yeah, five more dragons. I I'm excited by that. I'm a big nerd for the dragons. Give us all totally. of them, please. Um, you gotta assume at least one or two of those is gonna be a wild dragon, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be. That's what I'm most looking forward to because you know this story is all about the the high lords and the kings doing their thing. But um, in the second season, the 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 the, the way the story goes when uh, some characters die. And they have uh, more dragons show? than, you know. <gasps> it's cool because they need to bring in these peasant characters to kind of shore up their ranks of dragon riders. Just like they're they're, they're out of Targaryen. So they're like, look, can you ride a dragon? Are you this high? Then you get lands and stuff. Yeah. And um, we'll make you a lord if you can ride a dragon. And that's fun because it brings in some some like new dynamics, right? Like some, some, yeah. some different characters who aren't part of the Targaryen, Valerian incest circle that's been happening for centuries absolutely um which is just i imagine just as as a storyteller as a writer is it, pretty exciting and new dragons so sheep stealer yeah i'm sure that'll be one you got uh you got you got you got um tessarian who's darren's dragon i think oh who's yeah S- we'll probably Silverwing. see tessarian yeah silver wing yeah ulf the sot mounts so i'm sure there'll be others new stuff we've got to see uh what's the one what's the one that Little Aegon the Third has Storm Cloud. We gotta see that one because that one factors in to the gullet in a pretty big way. Because there's a yeah. whole thing where he like he flies himself to safety. So I'm I'd be surprised if we don't get that one. But yeah, we can speculate. It'll it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be a good time. I mean, he's like a little tiny baby. Like I'm not sure how they're gonna do. Well, whatever, we'll see what happens. As Julie says, I don't think Little five tiny seasons. Baby dragon. I think it'll be more like four. That is what I'm guessing. I, I'm going to guess it's going to be four. I think that sounds about right. I'm not sure they have enough. I think five. four. But it's still a yeah, long time to I, develop. Yeah. I'm going to guess. Well, four. I think I think four for the Dance of the Dragons. I think at that point, oh, no. the question is going to become, will they make it an anthology series to do other Targaryen stuff? Which I don't know that they would. But they talked about it a lot when the show was starting. Um, but I think if we ever saw it go five, that would be how. I think four is the right number. Maybe too. I'm guessing like four, and then they got Duncan Egg ready to go after that. Is 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 my oh, kind of I hope. hope. So. That would be. Fun. I hope so. Um, Anything else? 
Yeah, there are a couple of other uh, just quick little Game of Thrones adjacent news things. Let's just run through them. Consider this like bonus lightning round type stuff, but for Game of Thrones. Sure. So the uh, some Game of Thrones fans rewrote season eight as a podcast mm. drama. Um, have you listened to this, Dan? You you know a little bit more about this one, I think. Not really. I I I listened to part of it to like just make sure that it was like legit, and it's legit. Like they have a narrator. He has a British voice, okay. and then they have like all right. So so, so you know it's classy. They have like dozens of actors playing yeah. all the roles. It's actually quite impressive. This person named Call, wow. um, just Call, put together like a ten episode season eight rewrite with new actors, a new kind of story, and not in like a disrespectful season eight sucks kind of way, just yeah, an alternate version. I like I th- that. I think it's cool. It, it, it looks really, really cool. If you want to check it out, um, I probably should have got a link. Um, no, I don't have it right now. I'll get it like during while Dan's talking sometime, and I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. I, I'll talk some more right now. So the other <laughs> things that are going on in Game of Thrones land are like filming stuff. So Peter Dinklage just started filming his new passion project, The Thicket. And the other, okay. probably the biggest uh, adjacent news we got this week is that Brian Cogman, uh, uh, who is one of the longtime writers on Game of Thrones, uh, was. he wrote A Night of the Seven Kingdoms, the best episode of season eight, as well as a bunch of others. True. Um, he was has been tapped to show run a new Zorro series for Disney Plus, uh, starring Wilmer Valderrama, who is Fez from that '70s show, um, who yeah, I guess has done more serious stuff since then. And this has been like a huge passion project for him. So Cogman is going to be making that show for Disney Plus. Um, should be fun whenever they do it. I'm I'm curious because you know Zorro's a good time and a little bit, um, you know, less serious than a lot of these other shows. It seems like it would be a great fit for Disney+. Plus. Totally. I'm, sure be cute. That's, I'm yeah. just sad that, so that we didn't get him for House of the Dragon. It's, it's basically, I, I'm because I think that Brian Cogman was the one who originally was managing the House of the Dragon type show, the Against the Dragons, and then I they said, so. no, we'd rather waste time on Blood Moon, and then he left, signed up for Amazon, Disney, and now he's not doing it, which is too bad. Um, but yeah, yeah, sure. I hope Fez and he have a happy Zorro show together. Yeah, I feel like letting Brian Cogman get away is one of the real flubs Ooh. that I think HBO made in their spinoff stuff Oops. because he was kind of like the lore master on Game yeah, of Thrones like too. Him. Like they they used to joke that he was the third head of the dragon after the showrunners in terms of the you know keeping a broad eye on the whole production. Um, so. Yeah, I'm a little sad he got away, but wish him all the best. Hope he's making fun new stuff that he likes for other companies. Does Zoro um, have a catchphrase but, or anything? You know, I I don't know that he has a specific one. I thought about this when I was writing this up, actually. I just wrote on guard because mm. that's kind of a stereotypical sword <laughs> duelist <laughs> I guess thing to did, say yeah. that I know he says, but I don't know if he has an actual catchphrase. Okay. Catch this make, blade, fool. That's make, Richard's. That's what he says, and I, we're gonna run with that. Make way for Z. Okay, he might say that. Yeah, it's just blade, fool. Yeah, but yeah, best of luck. <laughs> so, yeah, best of luck. Uh, but so speaking of swashbuckling, sword wielding heroes, mm-hmm. uh, there the biggest news we've probably got that just happened today is that Netflix just we're moving away from Game of Thrones now. Netflix oh. just released a the first trailer for their last kingdom movie, Seven Kings Must Die. Have you seen the trailer, Dan? And how yeah. high are you? Um, the Last Kingdom is a show that I've always thought was really good and I respected it. And it's just Same. it's just this sturdy fantasy drama. It's been going for five seasons. They're making a movie out of the final three books. I mean, um, I've always liked the show. Always liked it. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it 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 looks like the rest of the Last Kingdom. Um, at, yeah. <laughs> at some point, I just start getting amused at how Uhtred never ages. But meanwhile, oh, sure. two two generations of kings have died, and he's still kicking. Um, at, at this point, it's very funny to me. But um, I will fully watch this movie. I saw the whole thing. I'm looking forward to 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 bring it home. How about you? 
Oh, I yeah, I can't wait. Um, I totally agree. The Last Kingdom is not a show I was ever like obsessed with the way, you know, I have been with things like Game of Thrones or The Last of Us, but I've always really enjoyed it. It's always been solid. It's it good. never it's really always had, been good. Yeah, it never really had like a, you know, a real point where it dropped the ball. Like it, it gets a little repetitive at times, just how you know, the entire show is just everyone gets Uhtred to do their dirty business and then gives him no <laughs> credit. Um, and that's just been the format of the show for five seasons. But I I really enjoy it. I'm glad they're making the movie. I do kind of agree with you uh, that I wish there was going to be another season of this thing. Yeah, but I can understand. there are three more books and just, you know. Yeah, and, and they've been doing two books a season, but apparently... So what I read about this is that a lot of it ties back to the studio. I think it's Carnival Films that mm -hmm. makes this show had a plan for five seasons. That was their plan when they started making the show. Bernard Cornwell had written, I think, around 10 books at that point. And mm -hmm. then he just kept writing. Um, yes, so did. I think there were like contractual things, too, because like um, I think it's a, I can't remember her name. Uh, Alfred's wife. Ethel Fled's mom. Oh, uh, yeah. Her uh, name is Ailswith. me. Ailswith. I love her. I got it. Ailswith. I got you. Ail yeah. So Ailswith is not in this movie. I know that's not. She's and it's, fun. I like her. Yeah, she was one of my favorite parts of season five. But it, but it was contract and scheduling stuff. And I think that's kind of the issue they might have run into if they tried to like just do more seasons. Um, because leaving her off for a two-hour sure. movie yeah, is doable, but for a season, I don't know that it would have been. But yeah, I'm excited. I, I, it isn't. It's always a surprise to me how the Last Kingdom fans come out of the woodwork. I agree with you. I feel like it's been like a quiet hit. You don't think it's a huge hit because people aren't hyping it from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. But then anytime there's anything, the Last Kingdom fans show up for Uhtred the Never Aging. Like rolling thunder. Just it's, it's 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 just this low rumble that never goes away. Not like any like yeah. big lightning clap from the mountain or anything like House of the Dragon was, but it's it, it's it, it's it's just this consistent. It's a good metaphor of um yeah, fan a... buzz that never stopped and continues to this day. And by the way, uh, yeah, on 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 YouTube, um, JD Palm Thirteen asked if we prefer Last Kingdom or Vikings. I never watched Vikings, but I like Last Kingdom. Daniel, did you watch Vikings enough to compare? Yeah, so I watched, I think, the first four and a half seasons of Vikings. I haven't it's finished a lot of seasons. it. Um, there's a lot of seasons. I've watched up until the show is really more about Ragnar's kids after some things happened to Ragnar. Um, man, Damn. it's hard. I, I personally, <laughs> that, yeah, spoiler, all these characters are historical. They all die. Um, that was good, yeah. But I like The Last Kingdom more personally i i think they both have aspects i like about each of them more or less but kind of on the whole i i like the last kingdom more i like the the cast more i kind of like the story they're telling a little bit more mm -hmm. than just you know ragnar's travails and sometimes that's really interesting sometimes it's a little weird sometimes he's just real unfaithful to all the ladies in his life and it feel and i hate watching it so Vikings is a it's an I think it's a little harder of a show to digest than The Last Kingdom, but I like The Last Kingdom more personally. That's my vote. And I mean and I'm curious out there, people watching, what do you prefer? Which which one is yeah. better? Let's get Vikings. But without without that, let's uh, see, I watch totally this agree with Julie. Julie. Yeah, let's Julie is spot on. I liked Vikings more at the beginning. It kind of flagged a little as it went on, but the last kingdom. Like you said, low rumble, just steady all the low way. Rumble. I did really like the ending of Last Kingdom. I, I really like that he got that back. That was a very satisfying stopping point. And we'll see if they yeah. ruin it or make it even better with the movie. Uh, should we watch the trailer? <laughs> Let's do it. Oh. All right. So he's going to love these aesthetics, die. right? Which is a good title. Good title. I like that title. It's Seven great Kings title. Must Die. Very pulpy. Flaming Arrow got a Flaming Arrow. Yes. Look at it go. There's Uhtred looking good. Who can Been we in, pause there's on? A new, there's a as soon as they give us a person, armies on the field. The Battle of Bastards there. Oh, can oh, we pause that guy, on that okay. guy? 
Yeah, that the guy with too. the crown, that works. He works, yeah. yeah. Him. So that is Ethelstan. So we got, again, Uhtred has lived through th three generations of these people. <laughs> from Alfred, the, the first king, to his son, Edward, became king after him. And now Ethelstan, Edward's son. By the way, the, they give away in the trailer. There's like, King Edward is dead. Like, all right, damn, way to yeah, spoil it. Yes. Um, but they have three books to get through in one movie. In one movie, they gotta keep things moving. Um, I believe that Uther yeah. raised Ethelstan, but as he's found out, yep. whenever someone gets a crown on their head, they start getting wild ideas about their authority. <laughs> so um, I imagine even Ethelstan, Uhtred's surrogate son, might be hard to handle. Um, and he's yeah. just, just just Uhtred can't get no respect. It's it's just. Eventually, it becomes a Rodney Dangerfield problem that just he's three kings deep into this dynasty and still no one helps him. Uh, yeah. But uh, it, but pretty yeah, much he's 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 a new king in town. Yeah. So it'll be it. It's interesting that Uhtred basically raised this king. I feel like that could make it even worse when he eventually decides to crap on Uhtred because that's what everyone does. Um, but obviously, so this movie is going to be about historically, Athelstan, I believe, is the king who first unified England. So mm -hmm. presumably that's what we're going to see in the movie. Yeah. Shall we roll on? Hey, cinematography. Oh, there's our Uhtred. There is one shot. Oh, 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 that one, that one, that one. Um, the one of him in the long braids or whatever he's wearing there, just really fast. I don't think to say. I just want to say, um, again, Alexander <laughs> Draymond, Uhtred, <laughs> se 75 years young, looking just fabulous. That's right. right. That's you know, I, I can I ask you, can I ask you, I wonder about this sometimes. So the books did like a whole old man Uhtred thing because he actually becomes an old man mm -hmm. by this point in the books. Um, but I almost feel like having Uhtred be an old man makes him feel less cursed because there's something really sad about the fact huh. that he is still this young looking dude and everyone in his life dies. And I wonder if that wouldn't hit Except the same bros. way if he was an old man. What, um, what was that? Except his bros, his bros keep ticking. Like he, he's had like four girlfriends die, wives, kids, kings, but yep. like he, he and Finnan and Citric still toy. Um, Everyone except Baby Monk. He had to go terrorize Westeros. Yes, uh, as Aemon Targaryen. Aemon did have to to die so he could become so he can get a House of the Dragon, uh, which I which good career move because he's broken out. That guy's intense, by mm -hmm. the way. They, he had this long interview yes. where he just talked about like his approach and like he he's he's like he's almost one of those like those method people who are like I'm Aemon all the time. Like oh god, that's bad. Um, I don't think so. I just think it's kind of, I'm not sure why they, I guess he does seem cursed. I mean, is it curse? Is it just the television wanting to let Alexander Driven be handsome for five seasons in a movie? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, it's, it's gotta be that. I'm sure it was not an intentional thing. Like let's make him stay younger to feel cursed. And it was more just Alexander Draymond, our sex icon lead. We're not going to put him in an old man outfit for a season. Um, but yeah, it's just something I think about sometimes because in the early seasons, they definitely put it across like Uhtred, you're kind of cursed. All the ladies you That's fall true. in love with die. Yeah. Um, but at this point he's doing okay. So curious to see how that goes in the movie. I mean, he's cursed. Like, so do all the James Bond's girlfriends, but th that's just because they want to get into the next movie and put asses in seats. I don't know. It seems a little self-serving to me, but, okay. um, why That's don't we fair. roll it on? Yes. Ooh, knives. Ooh, swords. Ooh, battles. Ooh, with the sword. Ooh, ships. Again, Ooh, ships. it's hard not to look at this and, like, see Game of Thrones oh. a little bit. Like, you see all the yeah. armies arrayed, the horses, the overhead shots, the Battle of the Bastards right there, the shield wall. Um, I mean, it's not, because... Uh, Bernard Cornwall was writing this stuff long before Game of Thrones was a twinkle in HBO's eye. Totally. But, um... I just can't not see it. I like that title, A Prophecy, Seven Kings Must Die. I like titles yeah. that are specific, but, and like, don't give everything away. I think that's a good middle ground. It's not like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I don't have a a, a, a fully formed the partner, rise of Skywalker. Kind of... See that one just confusing. Yeah, it it, it needs to be like <laughs> mysterious, but Skywalker's not the rise. Well, yeah, Skywalker's a person. That's fair. Gotcha. Or, Skywalker. Or, 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 it, the, it's a surname. It, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. I kind of love this title, and I love how much like speculation it has birthed around like mm-hmm. who are the Seven Kings and stuff like that. And it's who are not the seven exceptionally. Kings? Oh, I can't name them off the top of okay. my head, but we can mention probably what will be covered in this movie. So there are three books that this movie needs to touch on. Um, I don't know how it's going to do that, but the one it really needs to address is Warlord, which is the last book in Bernard Cornwell's series that ends with the Battle of Brunanburh, which is the historic battle where England was united because a bunch of petty kings or kings from other nations, like King Constantine of Alba is one of the kings who was involved in that battle, and a bunch of them either swore fealty or died. Um, So it's not 100% clear if this is going to be a literal death if some of them are just going to give up their kingship. But the Battle of Brunanburh is the one we are almost certainly going to see in this movie. I'd imagine that's going to be like on. the climax of the movie and it'll be pretty rad. Yeah. April 14th, everybody. See you there. Yeah. And as Julie says, perhaps Uch just, t- just took care of himself, uh, ate healthy, it's good, good skin care program. Yeah, maybe. It's a lot of exercise. And, um, I mean, we don't have uh, pictures of 70-year-olds from the Middle Ages, but if we did, they probably all look like that. Anyway, any final thoughts yep, on the what last few kingdom? of them there were? <laughs> um, I, I don't think so. I, I think we touched on all of it. I'm just really excited. Uh, and that is going to be a lot of fun when it hits. Um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, you know, this production... The Last Kingdom production has been really solid the whole way through, and I'm curious to see what they can do like with a feature length film instead of a 10 episode season of television. Like, I hope they make it feel momentous like a movie, like the brave part of The Last Kingdom. I hope they pull something like that off. Yeah, yeah, bigger and just, you know, I hope they put the sort of attention into that. I, I hope it looks better not just looks but seems like a better bigger thing than episodes of the show i guess is what i'm trying to say yeah and i think it would have to be um i have faith in them i'm sure they'll do a good job april 14th looking forward Same. to it yeah um but in the meantime we you know we're not quite there yet uh shall we move on to talk a little bit about that other show we've been watching lately what other show daniel enlighten me Ah, it's this little show called The Last of Us that has been on HBO. And, you know, before The Last of Us, well, not just before The Last of Us, but in general, there have been talks of like Game of Thrones is the last water cooler show, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my Um, God. I think that, (laughs) yes, give it the the disdain it is owed, Dan. Um, But... There are the folks saying that now. Of... Like, I literally read an article or, or saw a headline anyway. Like, The Last of Us is the end of an era for TV. The last time we're like, people, did you learn nothing? Like, if you make a good show and it's on, you release it weekly and people get onto it, it'll be a water cooler show. We, I, we, 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 yep. we, we, we have to stop prognosticating the end of water cooler TV. It's becoming embarrassing. Okay, go on. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's fair. I I totally agree with you. I I think as long as good shows get made and released, like you said, piecemeal, so you can't Mm -hmm. just Netflix it because then people binge it and it's, you know, you're not bringing people together once a week for two and a half months to discuss a thing. Um, I think we'll keep having water cooler shows, but it's awesome Mm -hmm. how The Last of Us, like HBO really just had a lot of faith in this thing. And really in Craig Mazin, the guy who made it, because, you know, yeah, well-placed. This is not something, you know, Game of Thrones, there's this whole story about how they pitched it and got really lucky and had lots of false starts along the way. Uh, This show, Craig Mazin basically just walked into HBO and said, this is the thing I want to do next, and has such a good relationship with them that they were like, cool, go do it. It's going to be great. Um, 
But the thing I'm wondering, and the thing I'm curious to hear your take about, Dan, is Mm -hmm. I I wonder if The Last of Us is going to become like the next like Breaking Bad type phenomenon dark show. Because I use Breaking Bad specifically as an example because it deals with some similar dark elements. You know, it's going to really challenge who we root for in this show. Uh, You'll probably see this in the finale um, based on the game. Probably. Probably. Definitely in season two. Um, So what do you think? Is that comparison apt? Am I fooling myself to think this thing is going to gain that kind of steam? What do you think? I mean, I, I see what you're saying. That uh, that that Breaking Bad was a, a show about a character Walter White who went from being like a um guy next door high school teacher into being a drug kingpin, but he was an antihero and we loved him. Um, it, it's a little different. I feel like mm-hmm. we're we're now in like the post antihero era, like you know Breaking Bad and okay. Mad Men and The Sopranos, all all those shows from like the early 2010s and 2000s where that were like the, the main character was like a brooding dude who did yeah. bad things but we liked him anyway um i feel like we've done it and, and now it's just kind of normal to do that and i'm not going to spoil anything but especially in, in season two we'll, we'll get into more about um because i mean like if if the point of those shows was to ask can we root for a character who does bad things the answer is obviously yes all the time it's all will do that like that's no longer in question yeah people love tony soprano love walter white loved uh don draper um yeah n- the last season two is is, is going to be a little um we'll try and go further i think and try and ask can we sympathize with the character who is opposed to that person i i don't want to talk I don't want to give away spoilers because it's going to be hard for this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. So it's playing. One... It's playing in 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 some of the same sandbox areas. Yes. Human tragedy. Human tragedy. Yeah. Human tragedy. I think so. Again, we won't spoil things. I can't wait for you to get to this. There are some beats in The Last of Us Two which are the exact t- same story tropes as Breaking Bad used. So that's part of why I've been thinking about it this way. But I think the big question is, can people come back from not, can we root for awful people? Can people we like who do awful things come back from it? I think it's kind of the question that the last of us is really going to have to wrangle with, but you're right. We won't know until season two comes. Walter White, he, he died. (laughs) So I guess that that's how they solved that. Um, Yeah. Will the similar fate. We've both seen the finale, by the way. We watched the finale. Um, and unless yes, it's part two. That's true. I, I'm going to go play some tonight, actually, after uh, work. Yeah. Um, but I'm hardly even close to done yet. Uh, so it, 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 it'll be a while there. Um, we watched the finale. We both have. We're not going to spoil anything, but it is pretty intense. I'm looking forward to that talk. How about the most recent episode? Yeah, what do you think of um, Ellie and Joel's brush with cannibalistic priests cult? Um. I loved it. I think it was you loved a, it. a really, re- really solid episode. Um, I kind of had like no qualms issues. I, I think maybe they went a little hard on some of the, you know, just David as a very, I don't want to say dramatic character, but he's kind of a character of grand statements and manipulation. And there are times that it really hit for me and times where I was like, I don't trust you, you guy. Um, <laughs> but generally, I, I thought it was really good. I think it's a really faithful. It, it's incredible to me how it expanded on what's in the game because it does change things up a little bit from the game, but is still so many scenes are like exact. Um, the the whole sure. fiery showdown in the lodge. So I liked it a lot. Um, I think they nailed this this one in particular i think they really did a good job what about you dan i liked it um my favorite bits are, are pretty much always the jewel valley bits like i i i love their yeah. connection i love seeing their care i don't know um i thought i rolled my eyes a little at i thought the villain the villain was a tad overwritten i think kind of um yeah. e- evil 
priest is sort of a cliche uh, that they kind of go to a lot in this kind of media. Um, and I don't know. I thought he went. I thought he was awfully fast to be to Ellie to like. Um, <laughs> I'm going to spare you, 14 year old girl, because you and I can be king and queen of hell together. I'm like, all right, that's coming on very strong. Um, so that was, you know, it, it, like how, 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 how many times have you got that? Like the supervillain speech of like, we're not so join different, me, you and I. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was giving off that. I mean, he was good, and I liked it. And I mean, uh, Bella Ramsey as Ellie gave gave a great performance. I like her. Fantastic. You know what I thought of when she was stabbing the crap out of Kevin or whatever the priest guy's name was? Was um, what? Arya from A Storm of Swords when she stabs the dude in the inn? Um, I think the tickler and just like says, how many, how yeah, many, yeah, how yeah. many, how many, which they didn't really have in the show. They made uh, it a lot more cool. No, I was like, Ooh, yeah. this is the, this is the game of Thrones adaptation of the Arya chapter. They never did on game of Thrones. And there, there it is. And she did a great job. And then I love when her and Joel reconnected. But um, as far as uh, the little discreet adventures go, I, I think I liked Kathleen as a villain more than I liked this guy or bought her more as a villain. I like okay. this guy. Also, that fire think... was very, very CGI fire, and it spread awfully fast. That's a nitpick, but I was like, damn, huh. that fire is catching. How dry are those curtains? Okay. <laughs> I didn't really think about that. I'm going to have to pay attention to that on the rewatch. I, I could see that. I could see how, you know, the David stuff. Um, David, that was his name. M- David. Yeah, I could see how it might have felt a little bit like a cliche. I think there are some reasons. Um, that they made them a religious cult maybe to like acclimate us to the idea that cults can exist in this world because this isn't the last one we'll see is all i'll say um but your uh, yeah that's right but generally i i like this episode a lot um and like you said a lot of that came down to bella ramsey um she was just fantastic she totally reminded me of Arya in that scene. I thought of Meryn Trant, which is the closest thing the what show really has did, yeah. to that Tickler scene. Um, but I also really loved seeing Troy Baker in this episode. He was fun, yeah. James, David. Yeah, David's right-hand man. It's kind of meta and messed up. So if you if you don't know, I Julie mentioned she hasn't played the game, knows nothing about it. The guy who played James in the show was Joel in the game. Um, so it's kind of meta that, of you know, El- Ellie has to kill him to get out of where she's going. And That's he's cute. the reason she gets caught because he kills her horse and stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah I-, I like this episode a lot. I My qualms were few, but I respect your qualms. I'd put it, ooh, I might rank them. I think I'd put it. And That's a fun th- idea. Th- 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 they've all been good, but I think I'd put it like second True. to last ahead of the Ooh. the premiere on this one are, are the two like weakest even though they're both they're all very good and i guess the fourth one too was a little okay. kind of like set up heavy whatever they've all been great and we'll yeah. go to the finale yeah i think that's the thing with this show and this is another thing that made me think about breaking bad nothing's been weak there it's are... not like the house of the dragon Ex- episode nine where i'm like oh like th- th- there's been nothing bad yeah, that's the thing. Even if there are things that, like, you know, we're nitpicking because that's our job mm-hmm. to critique these things. We've but, like, such, yes. there hasn't been a bad episode of this show. Like, no. full stop. No, no, no. There hasn't been anything less than a good episode. Maybe you can maybe nitpick some stuff. Um, we can, but one, we will. One question I want to ask you, and maybe you okay. guys in the chat, too. I would love to know your opinions on this. Because it's been getting a lot of talk since this episode. People miss the infected. Because there weren't any in this episode. We haven't seen an infected in anything but a flashback since episode five. Um, mm-hmm. What do you think, Dan? Do you wish we had more infected in this in this show? Um, I don't really, I mean, if the drama is good, I don't really think about it. They're cool. I like the infected. Okay, that's fair. Um, uh, I I I can't say I particularly miss them. No, although sure. Okay. If if you I enjoy them when they show up. I liked um the fungus guy against the wall in the uh, Ellie and Riley flashback episode. I thought he was cool, 
And of course, I enjoyed yeah, the big cool, zombie um, gasm in episode five where they all burst out of the ground. That was fun. Um, no, not really. Do you? Okay. I miss them a little bit just because I think it it's easy in these kind of zombie shows. And I've felt this way about The Walking Dead at times mm -hmm. where when you leave them off screen for too long, um, it starts to feel like the world is not really as dangerous as people are saying it is, even though sure. like the whole point is the humans are just as bad or worse. Um, I think there is something to be said for just reminding us they're around. So like JDE Palm 13 says on YouTube, I was okay with no infected. Me too. I, I don't, didn't miss them in this episode at all, but did notice that it has been a while since we saw them. Um, and that's just kind of how I feel like, you know, Joel and Ellie haven't seen an infected since they were in Missouri. <laughs> and they're now, you know, they've been tramping around the Midwest for weeks, for months. Um, so true. I I wouldn't have even wanted a set piece. Just show some in the distance. Remind us that they're there somewhere. Okay, okay. I, I hear you. I appreciate you. Yeah, sure. Hit on that. Again, why they don't hire us, I don't know. But um, yeah, I agree. But I, I haven't really Who missed can it say? that much. Who can say? Nobody, nothing. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so that's, do you have anything else you want to throw out there for The Last of Us? I had a bunch of stats. They basically all equate to The Last of Us is doing very, very, very <laughs> well for HBO. It's a big hit. We're going to get more seasons. It's but becoming you have anything the you network's add? big new marquee series. I mean, like this is, it is. It, it's doing better than, it's doing better than House of the Dragon did, I think. Like it, it's becoming the big new one. I believe you're beat. right. Um, yeah. so I guess I'm curious as an executive, what do you do with that? Like, and HBO is a bit different than other networks. Like again, if 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 yeah. Disney had the, which they never would, like if if Hulu or FX or AMC <laughs> or Paramount Plus, Peacock, if they had The Last of Us, they would think like, okay, Ellie spinoff, or they would think like, let's get other video game shows. HBO the last of do... them. The first oh, of us. Oh, yo, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you're talking. <laughs> yeah, right. maybe. And this is why I'm glad HBO has this mm -hmm. show and not any of those other networks. The first of us. It's a whole series about like what happened on the breakout day. That's what that would be. And they and they put production now. Uh, it's a, it's an anthology series, different stories from around the world. Mm. <laughs> so sorry. Sorry, I, everyone. For I'm that sure awful idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're getting um, that they're talking about it, but I trust that they'll just keep making good stuff and keep exploring new things and be content to set trends for the rest of the industry like they always do. And then, yeah, God. Same. So I, I guess this means we get to have another wave of zombie shows, probably. Um, but we'll cross that infested bridge when we get to it. Yeah. And The Walking Dead is just winding too. down. I am, it's true. I am legend too. No. Who are we kidding? The Walking Dead will go, we'll it will go on after we're both dead. That's how long I expect to see that show. <laughs> because... Literally, The Walking Dead zombies I, are I persistent. Know. There have there have been like more than one zombie show on the air for well over a decade now. Like it's just we 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 can't we we can't let them go. We just love zombies to death. I guess that's what. That's what makes them so scary, Dan. No matter how we might wish they'll go away <laughs> they from our television sets or from banging on our compound gates, they just keep <laughs> on going. As Robert Harrod asked, any, any news on Invincible? No, it, it's still coming this year. I'm still looking forward to it. Daniel, um, I still recommend that you watch it. And when it comes, I will be seeing yes, it and enjoying I need to. it. This summer is, is when I'm talking to Robert. But um, let's... Well, let's move on, Dan. Is next uh, what we're watching or not watching or doing? I think it is. I, yeah. What what we're watching, reading, playing. How are you filling your time, Dan? I saw Cocaine Bear. Uh, oh, yeah. How was that? It was cute. Did it change your life? No. It it was cute. Um, You know, Fair. Bear does some cocaine. They write some, like, eh, mad jokes about it. And then there's some gory stuff that <laughs> also, I mean... I heard like PETA gave them an award for not using a real bear. And like, you can tell it's just, how do you use a real okay. like, at all? Like there's like, there's, it's, it's all CGI bear. What do you guys use a real bear? Like, you know, you just, 
I could have used like, I don't know, a couple of snapshots of a real barrel or, or, or like a prop bear at some point. It was cute. It's, it's, it's nothing really to, to, to really talk about beyond like, it's about what you think it is. It's it's not going to change your life. Yeah. But it was 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 fun for a couple hours. There's some brutal kills in it that you laugh ironically at, which is um, I think our reviewer Richard called it like a troll movie, like a movie based on a trolling concept, which I can see. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't say that, that doesn't say it was bad. Okay. It's just that's what it is. So just go in knowing what yeah, it is. Yeah, you got to know what it is going into it. Yeah. Um, that's that's about I, yeah, it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I kind of, not that I, I like the idea of PETA, like, giving awards for stuff like that. Like, I liked it when they did it with the boys, where they, you know, the deep, the deep's whole thing with the octopus, fine. Um, I have this on the brain, though, yeah. because that episode of The Last of Us, PETA. episode eight. Oh, yeah, my dog is here. He's trying to invade the podcast, um, slash get my attention. Go away, please. Not really. You no awards for Peter. No, have him on there. <laughs> I always he's forget funny. his name. I always forget his name because you have so many Remy. animals in there. Remy. Okay, I knew that. Remy. Nice. Yeah, he's hanging out. Hey, Remy. Um, but yeah, so I think uh, I just I like when things like so. The latest episode of The Last of Us had a scene with a deer. It's very clearly cgi of the deer getting shot mixed with real footage of an actual deer i don't know how okay. they did the the dead version of the deer but when it was alive there are shots of a real deer so it's always a little weird to me because like i think that's commendable they clearly didn't hurt that animal i think the, for the, the one best. that's dead is a prop um but like how is that I, I don't know. I just feel like that is more commendable than just CGIing a thing in that looks bad for a whole movie. But that's just it doesn't look me, bad. It just it, it it looked like CGI, and that's fine. I didn't need any like yeah. verisimilitude from this. It was cute. What are you been watching, uh, Daniel? And what are you watching out there, good good readers and good watchers? What have you been watching lately? I so watch what have I been watching? I need to watch. Today's episode ooh, of The Mandalorian, ooh. I have not oh, I seen to yet. Another vibe. Um, need need to watch. Apparently, that. it's good. Uh, but that's. I'm glad to hear that because I was not under. I was whelmed. Hmm? Yeah, whelmed fully whelmed. or slightly underwhelmed by the fin by the premiere. So, I'm excited to read or to watch more of that. Um, Here's I'm overwhelmed. Mostly. Here's me. Just just whelmed. Yeah. Yes. Um. So. Yeah, aside from that, I've just been so deep in The Last of Us. <laughs> Ooh, I, I will watch other things next week <laughs> when it's over. But until then, I've just been re-watching episodes. I finished my replay of the first game to go along with, because I've been breaking down every episode and how it matches up to the Love game each that. week. Um, so I just finished that. Uh, and really JDE Palm 13 started reading Mistborn based on the recommendation here thank you and i'm really glad changing you're enjoying lives it. love that series changing lives one book at a time which the one thing i would have been doing a lot of is reading in the past week so i finished this book the tyranny dark. of faith by richard swan you can find my dark uh fantasy mystery you can find my review of this up at winter's coming right now loved this book i'm about to start this one the Faithless uh, by C.L. Clark, which is the sequel to her book, The Unbroken. Really enjoyed the first book. Really looking forward to this. Uh, lots of stuff about colonialism and some really cool magic. Um, really, really great series. And then I think you'll appreciate this one, Dan. Last one. Okay. So this is City of Thieves by David Benioff. Mm -hmm. I've been reading oh, this. I got this fun. yesterday from the library. Yeah. So... The reason I got this book at your local is library. because this at your local library, which I just happened to be at and thought, hey, maybe they have that book by David Benioff. <laughs> so there is there are cool Easter eggs to this book specifically in both The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part Two video games. Um, I will be writing about that at some point, but oh, yes, this was a do. huge influence on The Last of Us. Neil Druckmann has talked about um, it's basically the story of these two teenagers in uh, occupied Russia during World War II trying Ooh. to survive 
and complete this like impossible, ridiculous task. Um, and the city they're in is like under siege. They're in Leningrad when it's being bombed. And so there is a lot of stuff um, that is very similar to The Last of Us. Cannibals scrounging for supplies. Uh, so I'm reading this strictly because of The Last of Us. And it's been real cool to see how <laughs> art inspires art. That's my and I mean spiel of what I've been reading. Also, like David Benioff, uh, famously the showrunner of Game of Thrones, inspiring of HBO's course. next big genre hit. Like this kind of um, cool, right? Tradition continues. Um, as Julie asked, yeah. you're a very fast reader. How long does it take you to read a book? It depends. I mean, it depends on the size of the book. Anywhere from a week to three weeks. Sure. Uh, like this one. I just got yesterday. I'll be done with it probably tomorrow. Uh, but the tyranny of fast. faith took me three weeks because yeah, that's pretty fast. The tyranny of faith is twice the size. It took me a couple of weeks because I, again, the last of us has been devouring my life like a cordyceps fungus zombie. It happens. And uh, Robert mm -hmm. Harris uh, read, is watching has, is watching his materials, which, which, which is a decent show. Probably best to watch it oh. all together rather than. I watched the whole thing like as it was airing. And I think I, I, I think you're in a good place. And Julie Davis was watching Perry Mason. I also watched Perry Mason. That's a good show. Good slick HBO cool. period 1930s depression legal drama. Love it. What um, is it? Oh, it's a legal drama. Well, I've always wondered what that show is actually about. Well, I mean, Perry Mason was like a 1950s TV show about a lawyer. Um, and now this okay. is like 60 years later, the kind of gritty reboot. Uh, treatment, but more like the HBO see, prestige reboot treatment. Um, yeah. Oh, I forget the name of the main guy who's in it, but he's somebody people like. Is it and, and, Perry Mason? Yeah, the, the main dude. Sorry. I forget. I could. <laughs> what? What? Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, no, it's the, you're it's talking the about character. the character. <laughs> yes. I'm sure someone will knows. Yes, with Matthew Reese. Yes, that um, Welsh. Gotcha. Um, it, 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 it's really slick. It's like it's set in the 30s. He's like, you know, again, like kind of um, anti-hero, you know, alcoholic. He's troubled, but he's also um, believes in gotcha. justice and wants to get the to do the right thing. Um, cast of characters is fun. Everything is really well done. Grizzly murder. Someone's accused who didn't do it. Perry Mason solves it. I think back in the day, like in the old Perry Mason show, his thing was always like, which never, ever happens in actual court. Where he like gets someone to confess on the Tell stand, the which has, has never once happened. But in, <laughs> but in, in every episode of the old show, they're like, "Yeah, I did it, and I do it again." And Perry Mason's like, "Oh, got him." <laughs> but now it's kind of a more serious, <laughs> realistic take on it. It's a good show. It, it's good. I see. Okay, and before we go in the lightning round, J.D. Palm wants to ask, uh, have either of us ever read Acadia by Daniel Anthony Durham? To me, it's another good one to make an adaptation. Daniel, have you heard of Acadia? I have I have not read, is that Acadia, Acacia? I have not, by the way. I, I haven't know. read it. Um, I'm going to look into it, though, after the show, because I always like finding out about new books, and that's not even one I've heard of. So Dork. thanks, J.D. Palm 13. Check it out. Sweet. All right, we are going low on time. Should we go in a lightning round? Yeah, I did not order these. I'll fess it up right <laughs> which, up front. <laughs> which just like does not bother saying that anymore. We just, so, we'll like, just we never order them. Probably not. We can just assume. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So uh, I get. Let me ask you this one then. Okay, Dan. go ahead. Why not? Uh, the me. Witcher season three has stuff in it that no one has read or seen before in the witcher lore that's a quote from one of the special effects people on the show yeah um the witcher has is a show that's gotten progressively worse as it gone on mainly because they're making up stuff and it isn't as good as the source material and they're going to keep doing that and my prediction is Witcher season three will not be good and um that's what i think will happen we'll see when it comes out the summer yeah and Oh, that was good. You buzzed yourself. It's been over under. That's, that's Great. How there we go. Of the time you were. We're, we're I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll try to. I, why is my intro? Okay, never mind. <clears throat> Daniel, uh, Star Trek Discovery yes. will end with season five. 
I think if a spaceship blows up in space and no one is watching, Whoa. did it really happen? Ooh, spicy, no, I, saucy. Not to shade Discovery. I haven't really watched a lot of it, uh, but there are so many other Star Trek shows that have hit the air in the past year or two that I don't think it will be like hugely missed. I sure. think that Star Trek void will be filled, but yeah. I hope it's had a good run. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Okay, this is a fun one. So Lucifer star Leslie Ann Brandt, uh, who plays Mazikeen and Lucifer, joined the cast of the Rick and Michonne Walking Dead spinoff. Neat. Um, yeah, the Rick and Michonne Walking Dead spinoff going to come to the air next year, I believe. Um, I'm curious to see how well those things do, because it kind of determines whether they're going to keep making more of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I never watched Lucifer. I know Mazikeen from the Sandman comics. I doubt that she's his grizzly face in Lucifer. But good. I'm glad they have a cast. They're making it right now. Hope the fans like it. Yeah, same. All right, Daniel. Um, did you know that uh, playing the Marvel X-Men superhero Wolverine for the past, like, 25 years has apparently damaged Hugh Jackman's beautiful singing voice, who played Jean Valjean in the movie of Les Miserables, bring it back. I couldn't even make I couldn't even make the reference because you were too on top of it. Yeah, uh, presumably Jean Valjean was in there. It was before the most damage was done. Uh, I mean, that's a it little sad. Uh, I'm not too surprised. I have heard that. Haven't seen that version. Um, I'm funny. not too surprised. He does a lot of screaming and a lot of yelling like a crazy yeah. person in those movies. And like you said, he's been the character for what 25 years. So. Around that, yeah, yeah, he was he was I'm he was not okay. surprised, but you know, it's too bad. As Jean Valjean, who sucked, oh. was Gerald oh, Butler. Okay. I thought you were talking about there. No, that oh god, I believe that tanked hard. Okay, anyway, sorry. Let's move on. <laughs> um. All right. Well, speaking of things that didn't tank hard, but that people still had maybe some maybe some problems with. This has been making headlines this week. Jenna Ortega, who played uh -huh. Wednesday in hmm. Netflix's Wednesday, she revealed she had some major issues with the writing on the show, often clashing with the script writers. Uh, yeah, what she did. Um, I liked how honest she was. She was like, oh, yeah, Same. the scripts, like, they were just, uh, it, like, my character wouldn't do that. So I reordered everything. And I, 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 I came home, like, thinking, like, I think we might have made a crap show. It was um it was just very yeah. honest. It's relatable. Yeah. Uh, sure. Sure. It's relatable. And it ended up being a big hit. Well, so I, I, I guess they didn't. By the way, it was yeah. Russell Crowe who sucked in Lame is, not Gerald Butler, just FYI. Not to <laughs> Im, 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 impugn Gerald Butler. Okay. Um <clears throat> uh Daniel. Uh ends up that yes. Doctor Who, the long, long running sci-fi from BC came very close to getting canceled during the pandemic pandemic. Yeah, the BBC almost pulled the plug on Doctor Who. It, it has come out the the showrunner who is leaving this show, whose name I don't remember, um, talked about how during the Jodie Whittaker run, there was a period there was like a week long period where they just thought the show was over. Um and that, that it was really difficult just, you know, pandemic filming stuff. Could they justify the cost in doing it? They didn't know. But Doctor Who is still here, so it worked it out. All right. All right. Um, so, so I do not know who this person is. So I'm, I'm curious to hear about this. So they're okay. They're making a new Hellboy movie. Uh, I don't yes, know who asked for it, but it's happening. So Jack Kessie is going to play Hellboy in this new reboot. Should we be stoked? I mean, probably not. I mean, I'm just surprised that Hellboy keeps getting so many reboots because I don't think it's like that. Yeah, that's is, fair. Is it? Is he that popular a character? I liked the old movies with well, um, Ron Perlman and everything, but I, I I didn't think he'd like those were great. Like he'd be like Batman or Superman all these years later, still getting movies. But yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think he. I read somewhere he's one of the most successful independent comic characters so not okay. owned by dc or marvel but yeah i'm surprised too gotcha give, yeah. give spawn some movies here yeah i remember pick a different one from lunchboxes in the 90s all right and finally daniel that's um, right 
Uh, David Harbour. <laughs> David Harbour. David Harbour confirms that Stranger Things season five starts filming in June. Yes. Yeah. The Stranger Things cast just kind of gradually given us breadcrumbs. Stranger Things season five is starting up in June. Um, I think that's exciting. I'm glad they're not dragging their feet too much. And yeah. that should mean that we'll see it next year, which is kind of crazy. We'll be seeing the end of Stranger Things, and that will be a huge thing to talk about whenever that happens. It will. Yeah, that'll be big. But that'll be then. This is now. For now, we're here every Wednesday <laughs> at four at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Nice. Central, Central Standard Time, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Mountain, and noon in California yeah, in the sunny West Coast. Um, you guys can download us in podcast form <laughs> wherever you get your podcast, be it Google Play, iTunes, or elsewhere. So, um, you know, download us, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. So until next time, I did it, and I'd do it again on a care of it. See you next Wednesday. Goodbye. <laughs> Take care, all. <laughs>